Welcome to my latest video. Well, in this one, I'm going to upgrade this Buffalo Technologies. It's called an LS220D NAS, which is a network attached storage. This particular unit, I originally bought it as an empty shell, which the controller board and all of the controls, part of that, no drives in it. And I added two three terabyte drives that I happened to have at the time. They're in RAID 1, which means that it's still only three terabytes, but they're mirrored. So if one crashes, and that has happened, not to this one, but its sister unit that has two four terabyte drives in it, then I can go ahead and just replace one and it will rebuild itself after a few commands that I have to follow within its menu system. Well, now that I have two four terabyte drives that I happen to get at a really good price, I want to upgrade this one, thereby increasing its total capacity from three terabytes mirrored to four terabytes mirrored. And then this, along with its, the other device that I have, they'll represent a general backup of high and critical files within my network from my existing Sigma NAS server. And I'm gonna configure the Sigma NAS server in future videos to actually access these drives over the network and put backup files on them. So look forward to that in the future. But anyway, let's go into this. Let's do the upgrade and see how it goes. Stick around to the end and you'll be able to hopefully see this all running. I'll show it before and after and hopefully it'll be what I expect it to be. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing I suggest you do is go to the Buffalo website for downloads as shown here and also repeated down in the notes below and get the latest version of the latest NAS Navigator. So if you go and click on show all, type in your device, it will recognize that mine is this first one. And here you can get the latest firmware for Windows in my case, and also the latest NAS Navigator and install the NAS Navigator. In my case, once I enter the NAS Navigator, I see both of my Buffalo NAS systems. The first one is the one with three terabyte drives in it. The second one is the four terabyte. So as you can see, it's already here and it shows the total size of 277, 8.4 gigabytes. Now I have backed up all of my files, most of which to the, <laughs> to the four terabyte one. So now if I click on that one, you'll see that this is now 92.8% full. Now that's gonna be put back later after I've upgraded my three terabyte system. So if we right click on this and we say open settings, we will then in the basic menu system of the NAS Navigator for the device at this point. So I wanna click on advanced settings I have to provide the password. I'm gonna say change it from 10 minute timeout to unlimited and click on okay. And this brings me right into the main menuing system, advanced settings. So the first thing I need to do is break up the RAID array. It currently has one configured with the two drives. So in order to do that, I'm going to click in the drives menu. And then I'm gonna click on this little arrow here for RAID array. It shows me my existing RAID array it's called array one. I'm gonna click on this little hyperlink here. And now it shows the two drives that represent my RAID array. There's a Hitachi and there's a Western Digital, I believe, that are each three terabytes. So I'm gonna go ahead now and click on delete RAID array. It asked me to confirm this operation with a typing in the repeated number, so I will do that, which varies. Changes. It tries to confirm my action by asking me to type in a number that it's randomly selected. So I will type that number in and I will say okay. This is gonna take a little while to delete. Okay, that uh, took less than two minutes, about a minute and a half, minute and 40 seconds, which is pretty good. Let me go ahead now and say okay to this prompt. I will close this. So now it shows that there's no longer an array one RAID array configured. Let me close this window. Let's take a look at the drives real quick. If I click on the little arrow next to the drives, I see the two drives listed separately. I can format them or I could check them. But at this point, I'm gonna wind up removing the second one. So let me close this. And just to show you how things remained pretty much intact in terms of my basic configuration, I still have all of my nine users configured. I won't click on that, I won't show it here, but I also the groups are configured. I'll show those. So as you can see, I have three groups set up guest, admin, and HD users. And I could click on these, but I won't to show who's members of those groups. So all of the basic configuration is still intact. Let me close this. Now what I will do is uh, shut down the station and uh, replace the second drive with the new four terabyte drive. And then we'll bring it back up and see what it looks like. First thing I'll do is I'll do a log out just to get out of the advanced mode. And now I have to click the little switch on the back of the drive to actually turn it off. So I need to hit this switch right here, a two position switch. It's in the on position now. Now we're going to push it down to the off position and now it's being shut down. 
I'll see the lights on the network stop blinking and I'll see the fan stop turning when both of those things are accomplished and the drive is completely down. And there we go, it is now off. Just to be safe, before I pull anything out, I'm gonna disconnect the network cable and disconnect the power cable. And then I can turn this guy around for another drive. Open it up and I'm gonna pull drive number two. I grab this and pull it out. Drive number two, which is a three terabyte drive, just like I said, has now been removed. So I got the box with the new drive in it. Take it out. And this one is a four terabyte drive. So let me put it into the caddy that the three terabyte drive is currently in. There are four screws, two in each side. I take those off. Now the replacement drive is in. Bring the case back over here. Okay, let's now put this drive back in. Make sure that the number is oriented towards the top. And we'll just slide it right into the, into the Buffalo NAS. It's best to push it right where the drive is at. This is just a little too flimsy to push it in right. And then we'll turn this around. We'll reconnect the cables. Now we'll power back on and see what we got. What I have to do here is now hit the little switch again, pushing it up, and now it's cycling up. I see the network connecting. Okay, let's wait a few minutes and then we'll take a look at it through the system. So as you can see right now, it only shows LSNet 4, the one with the four terabytes in it. Once it looks like the network linking has settled down, I will click on search again and we'll see what happens. Oh, there we go. A new drive has been detected. Okay, so I found a warning message here. I'll have to go in there and format. It shows here that the second drive is not formatted. So let me right click on this, go into properties, open settings. We're back in the drive. We got a warning here too. I'll click on this and it shows a new drive was detected, either format it or configure it as a RAID. So what I will do is format it. Let's go back into advanced, go to login again. Let's go into drives, little arrow. It still sees the first drive as was last left. I will now click on the second drive and I'll format it. This may take a while. It's asking me to type in a confirmation random number once again. And now it's formatting. Okay, it did the full format. It took, I guess, about six minutes to do that. So that was pretty quick. I'll say okay to this. Now it shows two drives of different size. Drive disk zero is, you know, what you format three terabytes down to. And disk two is now the size that you'd format four terabytes down to. So let me close this and I will now switch again and pull out the first drive in the same fashion that I pulled out the second drive and replace it with a new one. I will run past that quickly at this point because I've already shown it. So the next thing you see is when I start boot it back up again. Well, it looks like the second drive has appeared again. Let's see what we got here. And now it shows that the first drive is not formatted. Okay, so I'll go through the same routine again real quick and we'll get that one formatted. Okay, the format is now complete. Let me just click OK here. And now we see that both drives have the same size, 3709.2. They're exactly the same, so I didn't expect anything different. Let me close this. Now I'm gonna have to rebuild the RAID. So let me go in here. Let me go in here, click on Array 1. And now what I have to do is I will click on this one. I will click on this one. I could have just hit Select All. And now I will click on Create RAID Array. You're about to change your RAID configuration. This cannot be undone. Proceed. Yes. Another random number to put in here. And now we have to wait. It's creating the array. Okay, the job is now complete. Now that I have the RAID array, the one thing that I lost by doing this upgrade are any of the folders that I had created. So I have to go back and create the one folder that I need. Since this is backup, it's a very simple name to it. I'll show you. So I go into file sharing, I have zero folders, I will create a folder. It already has one called info, that's created by default. I'm gonna create a new one. BKUP, 
I want to turn off recycle bin. It is rated after all. I don't need to give much of anything else. I will allow for FTP. I will allow for AFP, which is Mac. I will allow for backup because it will be a backup. So it'll be accessible from another device to be used as a backup drive. I will disable restrictions. I may turn those on later, but for now, until I get it reconfigured with all the files, I will leave that as is. So let's click OK. And it's done. That's usually pretty quick. So now I have the backup. So let's close this. And now it's all ready to go. I can put it back in place and it will be the secondary backup NAS that I have. So that really completes this video. I will go ahead and log out and be done.